is up guys today i am going to show you some tips and tricks on how to make your own tiered tulle ball gown now this dress has been floating around in my head since 2019 and it was such a blast to bring to life tulle can be kind of difficult to work with so i'm going to give you some of my favorite tips and tricks on how to work with it and make something really beautiful now for a tiered tulle look i'm actually using pre-cut tulle in a nine inch width because i found that it was easier to work with instead of having to buy a 50 8 inch bolt and having to cut it myself and I am all about saving time where I can. What I am doing here is I am measuring out how many yards I'm going to need for this white tier. I am doing this in four layers and we'll have a total of eight layers of tool per tier. There really is no set number of yards you need per tier. The more yards you have, the more full your skirt is. The less yards you have, the less full your skirt is. My largest tier was eight layers of 12 yards of tool, so for a total of 96 yards on the bottom. I will put a little infograph here of how much tool I used on my particular skirt so you guys can get an idea of like the math that was involved. My other recommendation would be split up how many layers of tulle that you sew together with one basting thread. So I am doing four layers of tulle per basting thread for two basting threads per tier. Once you've done all that for applying it to your skirt, I actually think hand gathering or using the basting thread and then pulling your gathers by hand is the best way to do this because it allows you more control over where your gathers go per tier. Now, as you can see here, I am doing a half circle skirt as my base, and that is because I want to show off all of my hard work. And if I used a full circle skirt, I would be hiding most of it in the folds of the fabric. And I want to be able to see all of these beautiful layers evenly all the way around. When working with tool like this, pins are your biggest friend. Do not be afraid to use them. I use tons of them per layer. It really helps keep everything into place, especially as you're moving it from your floor, like I am, to where your sewing machine is. Now sewing this down gets really repetitive, but it is really important to start with a fresh, sharp needle. I believe I used a Microtex needle, and you're going to want to use really small, tight stitches as well. And don't be afraid to go slow. This is a tedious process. Something important to remember is that you want to have a one or two inch overhang on the tier below it. That way you hide all of your stitch lines and it looks really cohesive and nice and yeah as i said it's just a repetitive process it does get easier the closer you get to the waist but just have fun with it and be patient Now, I will be honest, by the time I got around to do the top, I did not have much willpower left to do some filming, but here I am sewing the outer layer of the top. This is where we will attach the tool to. I did not give this as much structure as my normal pieces because this is actually going over the corselet, and I will link that video here. I just did some basic French seaming and then did light boning before it was time for the tool. The process for the tool on the top is the same as the skirt. I wanted a little more fullness, so I did a few more layers on the top than I did on the skirt. By this point, it becomes pretty much impossible to see any of the work I am doing, but here I am sewing on the blue layers, and then I will add the white layers after that. I actually ran out of space on my camera, but the next step was adding the orange ribbon and then hand stitching the top edge of the bodice into the corselet for the finished look. When all is said and done, this is what she ended up looking like. I do have one final parting tip that I applied after I filmed, which is using a steamer to help get these tool layers to look more cohesive and blend a little bit better. I wouldn't recommend an iron, but a steam setting on your iron or handheld steamer works great. You can finish this up with a zipper. Just be aware you probably have to hand stitch it in like I did. But yeah, this is the finished look and I hope you guys enjoyed learning my process a little bit and hope you apply some of it to your future projects.